Hey guys, Hink here. Today we're going to be talking about the literal like holy grail of enlargement. We're going to be talking about an actual drug that is guaranteed to make you anywhere between 10 to 30 percent larger. This is not clickbait. This is the real deal stuff, but it does come with the cost. So stay tuned. We're going to discuss it today. Hey guys, you heard me right. Like this is the real deal, like holy grail of enlargement because this substance, it's called anti-lox, is like, literally been proven in multiple different trials to dramatically increase the size of your penis. This is literally like the doctors hate him meme um, in itself. I personally think this is literally the future of enlargement, but we've, we've got a long way to go. So stay tuned and we're gonna be, to be discussing this today because it does come with the price. And so first of all, what is LOX? So LOX is basically lysyl oxidase. It's an enzyme that's responsible for taking your, your collagen fibers and your elastin fibers and basically putting them into the appropriate like organization so you can have your strength of particular tissues like the tunica of the penis and you know many other organs but it's a, it's essential for for these structures one of the theories that these people had is that basically the the tunica is the rate limiting factor okay the tunica meaning that thick fibrous sheath that's around basically the the, the chambers of the penis and so it's composed of these thick collagen bundles and a few elastic fibers and they actually are responsible and determine the actual penis length during an erection. Here's a quote here. Therefore, we speculated that some albuginia remodeling occurs during penile growth and interference with this remodeling process may promote penile lengthening. And so they're saying if they can give something called like basically anti-locks that is going to disrupt that collagen fiber, you're allowed like the, it'll allow the, the chambers of the penis to actually enlarge by disrupting those, those fibers, okay? So that's the, that's the background for this paper. And so, yes, this is a real paper that they did in rats, okay, in animal studies. And what they did is they had four groups, a control, a group that just got the anti-locks, a control that just got the vacuum device, and then a, a group that got the anti-locks and the vacuum device. So these four different groups, okay? They ended up pumping at a pressure of about 300 milligrams of mercury, which is about 11.8 inches of mercury, which is what we more commonly refer to. And, um, you know, yes, they actually did high pressure pumping. This is something that I've talked about before. I personally don't think between like five to seven inches of mercury is enough. I do think you need to get to higher pressures eventually, but you know, please, that's a separate topic and I've talked about this in separate videos. But what they did was they had these rats and they injected them with the, the anti-locks if they were in that group and then they literally pumped little, little rat members um, for two five minute sessions for seven weeks. And so if you think you have a crappy job, imagine you're a PhD, you work your whole life for that and you're in the lab like pumping up rats. Like, <laughs> that's crazy to me. Uh, but I'm glad they did this research, okay? And so what it showed is that the group in the, the anti-locks alone, so no pumping, no stretching, no nothing. They just gave them this anti-locks and it increased their length by 10%, okay? Just the vacuum device group increased by 8.2%, okay? So once again, guys, pumping works. It's been proven, and once again, it's proven here in this paper. Pumping alone works, and not only it works, it shows works for length, okay? But when you had the anti-locks plus the vacuum device, you were almost 20% longer, okay? And so that's a massive increase. Can you imagine being 20% bigger than you are right now? And so, and that's what this graph here demonstrates is that you can see these two groups, but clearly, you know, the biggest groups were the ones that either got the anti-locks alone or the anti-locks plus the vacuum device, okay? So for those of you that are wondering what actual anti-locks inhibitor they used, it's something that's called beta amino propion nitrile, okay? Or BAPN fumarate. And so if you hear me refer to BAPN, that's just the anti-locks substance that they used for this specific trial. So interestingly, what they also saw, which um, I'll, I'll reluctantly put up a, a picture here from this paper, but uh, they increased both the total penile length and then the exposed penile length. So exposed penile length is not like bone pressed or not bone pressed. What they did is they actually like dissected the penis and actually showed the actual chambers. And so if you look at like the bottom um, row of this picture, you can see it's literally like a dissected rat penis, okay? Obviously they sacrifice the animals. For those that don't know how most animal studies are done, they run their test and then they literally like 
kill the animals and then basically do whatever testing they need to in, in most, in some cases, okay? And so that's the case with this trial. So there you have it guys, like th this works, okay? So anti-lox alone combined, it does work. And so what does this have to do with us? Well, you know, I personally, I don't know what I'm gonna call this, like the hink theory or whatever it may be, but I think that PE is a process that is more like an aortic aneurysm. For those that don't know what an aortic aneurysm is, I'll put a picture up here, but it's basically when you have this vessel, your heart has this aorta that comes off the top, runs down, and has branches that feed your, your entire body, okay? You can actually have a dilation or an expansion of the aorta, which you do not want, okay? Because it can make it more prone to rupture. I've said this a thousand times before. This, I think that this is literally the process that is, that is responsible for PE because in your aorta, you have tunica. You have your tunica externa, which is very similar to your tunica albuginea. It's literally the same like materials, okay? It just has a slightly different name. Yeah, there is some minor differences, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, oh my God, it's not the you are literally remodeling this. And so here's a quote from this paper. As the tunica albuginea and aorta are both composed mainly of collagen and elastin fibers, we investigated whether antilocks could lengthen the penis by inducing penile albuginea remodeling similar to the effect of an increased aortic diameter, okay? That is literally like what I have been saying. I was so validated reading this paper because this is exactly what I've talked about. And I've talked about this before in the disease that's called megalophallus, where you basically have these chronic priapismal episodes for the most part, meaning you have these states where you can get stuck in a like in a, an erection, that, that, that harmful erection that's priapism when it's lasts like long, more longer than four hours. Here is a quote um, from this paper on megalophallus, which I've talked about before, but a 55 year old man presented with a complaint of progressive aneurysmal deformation of the middle two thirds of the shaft. So guys, that's, that's why I think that this is what PE does basically is it causes a chronic dilation of the tunica, which is what I've said before. That's literally like this paper that we're talking about with like anti-lox, that's literally what lox inactivation does. Like here's a paper that shows that lox inactivation leads to aortic aneurysms, okay? That's what they're basing this whole theory around. So anyways, I'm not saying that I am the most right, okay? I'm just saying that I think I have the most evidence for how we need to be thinking about like the actual enlargement process in general, okay? If you want to maximize your endothelial function, your penile tissue, maximize your penile health, if you're engaging in any kind of enlargement and you wanna minimize your risk of injury, you need to try our Vigor, okay? It's available on leviathansubs.com. It's also available on Amazon and it is an Amazon's choice, okay? So this is a product that me and BD personally de develop and it works, guys. It's not snake oil, okay? It's not going to make you directly bigger, but it will help in your process and keep you keeping you healthy, okay? Check it out, okay? Back to the talk. So another thing that I also felt validated on was, was pumping in this. And you guys know me, I've talked about like, I think you need to be pumping at higher pressures, okay? You know, once again, in this paper, they used a higher pressure, you know, 11 inches of mercury, which is a lot. And so here is, you know, a quote from the paper. They said that we found that 300 millimeters of mercury plus antilocks exhibited a larger penile lengthening effect than 200 milligrams of mercury uh, plus antilocks on unpublished data. Therefore, we selected the pressure of 300 milligrams of uh, mercury. And so they have found in their own independent research that especially in this specific case, in this specific animal model, that pumping at higher pressures is more beneficial for actual penile lengthening or penile enlarging, okay? And that's where a lot of my theory also comes from. I think, you know, if you have a baseline internal pressure, erection pressure of somewhere between four to six inches of mercury, that's like, that's published, that's baseline. Look it up, guys. It's around 150, you know, inches of mercury. If you are pumping to that same pressure, like that's just basically maintaining a physiological erection, okay? Yeah, it could have some benefit over time, but I think you need to be adding additional negative pressure to further expand those chambers. That's how you're gonna get length, okay? One thing to think about though, is there's also studies that are in rats, which I'll put up this paper here, which showed that basically 200 milligrams of mercury or about 7.8 inches of mercury is optimum negative pressure in rats. But these are rats that are dealing with a crush injury and are trying to recover. And so if you are pumping for health purposes, then you should not exceed eight inches of mercury, okay? And they found that in this study that anything above 200 millimeters of mercury or about 
eight inches of mercury was detrimental and caused harm. So don't pump too hard if you're trying to overcome an injury or trying to um, just promote your maximum penile health, okay? The thing that I loved about this paper also is that they finally gave a physiologic reason for enlargement. So many of these papers that, that show like, oh, extenders cause, you know, promote um, penile enlargement, they actually don't say why this is the case. In this paper, they said specifically this, Possible explanations for this increase includes continuous traction device-induced collagen realignment, okay, which we're already talking about how the collagen fibers can realign, promote growth. Stimulation of the fibroblasts, okay, basically some of the cells that help with connective tissue building. And then soft cellular proliferation, and they gave references for all of these things. And so I think that that's key that we can finally, I mean, it's theorized, but finally like there is an explanation as to actually why, and we can actually say the physiology why, not just like, oh yeah, it works because we, we proved that it's enlarged, okay? And in this paper, you know, obviously they saw that there was collagen remodeling and what they theorized was that this, the anti-locks actually delayed the collagen fibers coming together and it decreased the strength of the tunica and it actually made the tunica more prone to growth this way, okay? And so the key thing is kind of weakening the tunica or learning how to rearrange the collagen in the tunica and so this is something that is, has come up recently. I know BD and, and Perv have been working a lot about things like gua sha blade. I, I don't even know what that is, but these different like soft tissue massage, things like that, that can actually theorized help with like collagen realignment almost. And you know, I apologize BD and Perv if I'm putting words in your mouth. But based on you know, this paper, you know, it actually does make more sense to me personally. I think that I think that they're definitely onto something there. An important thing about anti-locks as well is that you know here's the paper I'll put up here. It's often used or it's theorized it can be used to help with what we call ischemic priapism and penile fibrosis. So, what does ischemic priapism mean? It means that basically you get an erection that lasts for too long of a time and as a result you have deoxygenated blood that develops in your penis and it causes that tissue to die or fibrose and scar down, okay? You do not want ischemic priapism. If there is anybody, um, now sneak dis alert coming up, that's promoting ischemic priapism as a means or saying, oh, this is how I recommend doing your PE because of priapism. Like, it's not good, guys. That's going to lead to injury. And, you know, especially if it's compounded with things like, oh, I think you should have bruising. Like, that's just not safe. It's just not safe flat out. And do you, do your own research. But I, I would certainly not recommend you listen to anybody like that, okay? But that being said, this paper literally shows that it can help reverse penile fibrosis, obviously through the same mechanisms of uh, the anti-locks. But it is interesting to see that data. And so you know, maybe this will be a potential game-changing drug down the line for something like Peyronie's disease, okay? But we do need to talk about the dangers of anti-locks, okay? But before I do that, if you guys don't mind just taking a second to subscribe to my channel, you're here watching my video, it would mean a lot. The channel's growing like crazy. I really appreciate the support. So, and you know, along with that, just give me a quick thumbs up. It would mean a lot, guys, so thank you. Put a lot of work into this. And so when we're talking about the dangers of locks, okay, you have to understand that, you know, we already talked about aortic aneurysms, but that lysol oxidase is responsible for the structure of almost everything in your body. So here are just some of the main organs that need locks. Your skin, your blood vessels, your heart, your lungs, your bones, your joints, tendons, your eyes, GI tract, your reproductive organs, and your liver. You can't just block lock. You can't just take a pill or something that's gonna block locks everywhere in your body. You will literally die. At the very least, you're gonna develop an aortic aneurysm, which is gonna rupture and you're going to die. You can go blind. You can have all of these different diseases like liver failure. That is the biggest catch up with anti-locks, guys, is that like, yes, absolutely. Will it cause penis enlargement? Yeah, period, no question. But at what cost? Because so some of you guys that actually need counseling are like, oh yeah, you know, in the end it could be fatal if I were to take locks, but it, I would have a bigger D and so that's worth it to me. And you know, you got, if, if you're thinking like that, then you, you truly do need counseling, guys. I'm not being funny here. Like if you're thinking it would be worth it to risk your life to have a bigger D, you need counseling. But this stuff isn't safe yet, guys, okay? Now, what would be a potential like golden solution? And I would love to hear you all's thoughts about this. You know, this would be something I'd love to do more research into, but like how could we get the anti-locks or the BPA in to just like the tunica? You know, I, I, some of the things I've kind of kicked around in my head, like what if you were to somehow like inject it into the penis and then put on a vacuum device and the vacuum device negative pressure keeps that 
blood and that tissue just in the penile chamber. Like, is that an actual viable solution? You know, I don't know. I'm sure that there's major pharmaceutical companies working on this exact question because, you know, this is a game, a game changer, okay? If you're a urologist and you can do anti-lox injections in a vacuum device, you, you know, th that's, that's the end game, guys, to, you know, to, to use some Marvel quotes. Like, that is literally the end game. This, this, this is literally the solution if it could be found how to do this safely. You know, all of you people that probably aren't watching this video are like, oh, penis enlargement is impossible. Oh, it doesn't work. Like, it, it does work. Uh, it's just, I mean, not even through this. There's other data as well. But, like, here's clearly an example of it working. One of the biggest limitations of this study is that they did not evaluate the additional potential side effects of the animals. And so, like, the rats, they only looked at the penis size. They didn't look at the organs or vessels or anything like that. And so we don't know how this is going to affect the different organs and organ systems, guys. But, you know, look, what are my takeaways from this? This absolutely works, but we need to figure out how to do it safely. I think it also proves that pumping works to elongate penile tissue. It's like definitive. And I also think it gives credence to the, uh, what I'm gonna call the Hink model of elongation, which is basically replicating the process of aortic aneurysms, okay? And remember, if you're having a bad day, at least your job is not being a rat fluffer for scientific studies, okay? So anyways, guys, I can't thank you enough for watching. If you're interested in any of our enlargement supplements, any of our enlargement products, excuse me, please check out peakmalephysique.com if you're looking for your own high quality pumps that are gonna be better than the ones used in the study for cheaper. If you need any of our supplements, leviathansubs.com. And if you need to reach me, patreon.hink. Uh, but uh, until the next one, guys, peace and love.